So Tom and I have ch- spoke for quite some time now about fretboard vis- visualization, and we're always intrigued as to how other players uh, visualize the fretboard. Shall I um, explain the thing about because the reason this comes up is because I tune in all fourths. Oh, you do. I'm one of those weirdos, oh. so I visualize everything. Speaking of Holder, if you tried that once, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. I liked when he says, like, "I tried it." For, I mean. How do you just try it for a couple of months? How, like when you have gigs and stuff. I, mean, I had a friend who did this when I when I did the jazz degree. I had a friend who changed to fourth studio three weeks before his finals <laughs> final recitals. Oh did my. a serious job. Wow, that's really a genius, bizarre. man. That's yeah, like really clever. Um, but the reason the reason mm-hmm. it came about is because that tuning lets you visualize everything one way. Yeah, yeah, and, and that for that and that way it's actually better. I yeah. mean, it makes sense. I think that was Alan's thinking too. By the time I thought about it as a possibility, it was too late. Like I'd been playing. I mean, Alan's supposed to be started when he was like 16 or something, and I think he probably tried that when he was like 18 or 19. Yeah, so, probably, yeah, mm-hmm. so, but like for me, by the time I thought about it, I was like, when it hit me, like, yeah, that, you know, the idea of instinct in jazz is kind of important, and that really helps with the instinct thing because okay. whatever you feel, yeah. it's there. Whereas the way I play with the, the regular tuning is. The instinct is kind of a little bit stunted, you know. Are you thinking thinking intervallically when you are in a solo? Like in terms of the way you're visualizing when you're playing, because you say say for instance um, minor leaps. I mean, giant steps is hard enough anyway, and you just made it way harder. <laughs> it's funny you um, mentioned that because I, I I was thinking recently that that Kukowski would nail that. Like that would be a fun, oh, sure. a fun oh. that would be a fun one to resurrect. We might have to bring that one back. You should have shouted it like, minor leaps. Yeah. yeah. Like, I gotta but, look at it a little first before you do it. <laughs> that's yeah. nice to know. That's, yeah, yeah. Um, but I haven't played it in probably eight years or something like that. But I did, I found an older recording of a band of mine playing that too and I started thinking about it again. Like I might have to bring that one out soon. Is that sort of a cerebral project for you for a while, like minorizing Giant Steps? Well, yeah, I mean, definitely when it began. I mean, just like Giant Steps was, yeah. you know, it was like, well, this, this might be clever, and then I tried it. I mean, it, it wasn't that long of a process. It was like, I said, ooh, I wonder what that, and I, oh, wow, that sounds great, you know. But I was also listening to a lot of Tristano at the time. Oh, right. So yeah. uh, if you listen to the melody, it's kind of like it's combining that Coltrane, harmonic concept with this Tristano line concept and created something. Um, but in terms of the way you're, so I guess this is what we're getting at, in terms of the way you're visualizing playing over that very complex harmony, but also being creative and playing, you're not just like when, as incredible as it was when you listen to Coltrane play jazz stuff the first time, there was a lot of sort of, you know, one, two, three, five things going on, the same kind of patterns. Now, you don't hear that so much in your playing and in more, you know, more modern kind of improvisations of that kind of harmony. How right. are you thinking about the fretboard when you're doing that? I don't think you don't get... Well, I've definitely worked on that specific yeah. thing. You know, there's something very derivative about it when I play it. But I'll do it every once in a while. Sometimes you just want to do something that kind of nails it and, yeah. and, yeah. and is in there, you know? Um, if I do it over minor, it doesn't sound as derivative because it's a different it's sound, yeah, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But there's definitely, if you l- listen, there's ways I navigate through that that are pattern-like, yeah. you know what I mean? Uh, but that being said, I also work on a lot of things, and I think Train either did or would have at some point as well. You know, it's just that when he first did that, it really did come out of an exercise for him. And, yeah, yeah, sure. and I mean, just the time and the way he uses those techniques, they'd never been done before, so they re- it's really yeah. special. I mean, even now when I hear it, I just, you know, geez, you know. Um, but that being said, I, I worked a lot on navigating changes like that in an organic way, uh, which can be, you know, most players can start that with a really simple uh, technique. It's just don't follow the shape of the chord. You know what I mean? Like I'll do a, like maybe one line that goes through, you know, a, a four-bar phrase from that tune, which is modulating, you know, in, in uh, down major thirds. But I might do a line that just this is like almost like a, a multi-scale, you know, a scale that's changing for each chord. But just in one continuous yeah, direction. Yeah. Which actually seems uh, contrived, but it actually ends up sounding more organic yeah. because it's moving and the chords are moving like this, and it's. You're you in know. control of the, the line that you want, right? right. And, the meaning and that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Is uh, you know, I practice. I practice that way. I practice yeah. with restrictions. You know, I make myself okay. Only do this. Okay, only do that. Only do this. 
And the idea of that is that when you go to play, you're more free. Tons of invisible change when we play. We think, yeah. you know, when you're playing free, yeah. you're playing free, but you're you're not really. I mean, especially rock players, but I mean jazz players as this well. Is, you this know is what I mean? the thing I was, I was going to say, like, because starting out as a rock player, and you did start. Did you start out as a rock player? Well, rock player? yeah. I mean, I started playing because I heard Eddie Van Halen. You know, I mean, I love jazz. I heard it growing up. So the rock and blues yeah. vocabulary, the way we learn as a rock player, is very much based upon not really necessarily knowing what our fingers are doing. Yeah, Whereas it's almost jazz, like it's almost cool if you don't know what's going on. You that's, cannot... that's a funny thing that I've seen, mm. which I, I think is weird because I think a lot of the best players, even if they say that, they don't believe that. Yeah, I, I agree. Know. I have to agree. Yeah. Mm. I mean, Eddie Van Halen studied classical piano. I just yeah. found out this recently with yeah. a student of Nadia Boulanger. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. I mean, she's the one who, like, I mean, taught Keith Jarrett, I think, and, like, all these, like, you know, Glenn Gould and stuff. Like, so Eddie was one degree of separation from that lady. Yeah, he was doing yeah. competitions and all sorts of things. So, I mean, you know, his father was a jazz uh, clarinetist, you know, so it's like, it's a reason when you hear all the yeah. other guitar players of that time and you say, yeah, okay, it's cool, but they kind of sound like cavemen next to Eddie, you know, yeah. it's like you hear him and you're like, what? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you know, there's there's a reason for that. Jimmy Page, it's clear that he knew a lot about music. You know, he listens to the intro to the Rain song, you know, it's like, you don't just do that, you know what I mean? So... I think that those guys, would, would, it became a thing to talk down that stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's in their own way, and like we talked about last night, even Holdsworth does it. And I just think it's kind of a little bit of a, a joke, you know. Maybe, maybe even, you know, maybe they even know they're doing it a little bit. Like, oh, if I joke about this, people will just think I'm a genius. But, but they're yeah, all exactly studying like, cats, you know like, what I mean? I don't, I, I'm not in control of this genius. Yeah. I don't know where yeah, it comes from. I don't from. know what it I'm just doing. Happens. Yeah, so I mean, I mean, I love those guys, but you know, I have to call them on that bullshit mm -hmm. a little bit. You know what I mean? Because it's like, those guys have all worked really hard at what they did. And they have, and you know, you know, at the, on, the, on the same, on the other hand, you know, Holdsworth will also admit that he has this catalog system, you know what I mean, which is like, that's almost more work than going to jazz school and studying, you know what I mean, like literally cataloging every scale possibility and harmonies that associate with those things, creating your own written system, that's kind of takes more time than even like enrolling in a jazz school and studying, you know what I mean, so my point is like, you know, people have funny ways of talking about how much work they've done, you know what I mean? So and I and I think that if you're a, j a rock musician or a blues musician, don't take too literally what your heroes say. Always, you know what I mean. Yeah. You have to listen to the music and and kind of listen to what the music is telling. If the music's saying this guy really worked on this thing, probably did. You know, mm, absolutely. You know, and and there's exceptions to that, and there's weird angles around that stuff. Like if you listen to someone like Steve Ray Vaughan play, when he plays something that's kind of vaguely jazz. He hits some funny notes, you know what I mean? And the reason, but then when he plays blues, it's like he's nailing and he's got so much stuff. But what's the answer to that? It's, it's, the, it's not that he's, 
The reason he sounds like that, he didn't study music, actually. Music. Theory is what I mean. Yeah. But he knows so much vocabulary. He studied so much Albert King, Albert Collins, B.B. King, Hendrix, like crazy. He could probably play, I bet you he could play any of those, uh, any one of their solos, he could probably play it. You know what I mean? Um, so that's the other approach, is the language approach, which there is some guys in jazz that do that. Chet Baker was like that. People say Wes was kind of yeah, like yeah, that. Rumor, you know? yeah, Lonnie language. Smith is kind of like that, who I play with, you know? It's, it's the language becomes the information. But you could argue that you have to, that at least has to be a part of what you do. Oh, absolutely. You know what it's I mean? always intrigued yeah. me about that. It's well, it's not even an argument. I mean, it has to be a part of what you're doing. If you know? these guys were to play over a chart they've never seen before. Well, well some of them don't read. Well, this is so, it, yeah. yeah. You know, Lonnie doesn't read. Yeah. And Lonnie even, you know, Lonnie, I'm talking about Lonnie Smith, who I play with the great organist. He, uh, he doesn't, uh, he plays very, some of his tunes are very complex, you know, strange chords and, and movement. And if I say, oh, Lonnie, yeah, it's, it's that, uh, you know, it's that, that, that altered chord we do there. And I'll say, what? <laughs> what do you, you know, and then, and then I'll say this one, boom. Oh, yeah, that. You know, oh, so it's yeah, he, he yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a language thing, yeah. you know, so that's, you could say that that's actually more important than knowing oh, yeah. what to call it, you know what I mean? But knowing what to call it does help the conversation and, and the process, you know. Yeah. But Holdsworth is the same way, as complex as his stuff is, I think the guys all have to learn his music by ear because he doesn't really write in any way that's readable to other people, you know. He's certainly not using the traditional system, is he? Yeah. Not at all. I mean... Yeah. That being said, you know, the scene that I come from, the New York kind of jazz scene, pretty much everybody can, some read really good and some, you know, can get by, you know, they can learn the stuff. And, you know, it's kind of, you know, I tend to learn things, I'm not a great reader actually, but I'll learn things pretty quickly, you know, so I'll look at it and I'll kind of find my way and then I'll start to hear it and then I get off the chart usually, you know. So are you sort of fairly traditional in sort of the American jazz sense that you, you have a lot, a lot of standards catalogued? Yeah, I'm big on that. You see, we are terrible. Yeah, we're, we're horrendous. Uh, a lot of people are. I mean, I, I just had a, a teacher really early on that kind of hammered it in, into my head about the importance of it. And then I, yeah. I, I went forward. I, I always tell the story that, I you know, he told me, you know, when you go to audition for, for college, you know, if you don't know, like, 200 tunes, people are going to laugh at you, you know, and of course you're this impressionable 17 year old, like, I don't want them to laugh, man, that would be horrible, and I'm picturing like, you know, a bunch of people around me, like, <laughs> pointing, you know, yeah, so I said, well, let me learn it, and of course I started pushing myself, and at first I didn't learn standards in the best way, it was very much finger memory and kind of, you know, uh, whatever systems I could grab to memorize the tunes quickly, you know, and then of course I went to the interview or the audition, and, and my, you know, the, the guy at University of Miami said, you know, well, Jonathan, do you know, do you have any standards memorized? And I said, jeez. Oh, and it was just me and him, and I was looking around for where are the people, the laughing people. <laughs> and then I, I said, yeah, you know, I have a list here, and I put a list, and it was, I said, it's only 90 songs, though, and I was, you know, 17 or 18 or something. And he said, "Oh, that's great!" You know, and of course, I thought of my teacher. <laughs> yeah, but it did you good in the end. Yeah, well, well, at that point, I really had already it had hit me that the process of the processing that your mind goes through in memorizing a lot of tunes, not reading them, but actually memorizing the structure and the melody and the way they work together, it changes something in your brain that's about the way you see any music, whether it's a classical piece or whatever. And, you know, I went on to college and I probably now, I, you know, I, by the time I finished college, I've probably had like 300 tunes memorized, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, An entire real book. This is insane. incredibly inspirational. Our next jam, no book. Yeah, no, you really want to, you really want to do that. <laughs> you really want to do that. And, and, you know, it's hard because when I tell people now, it's like you guys don't have quite that motivation that I had to like, I got to do it. I got to do it. Yeah, every day was learning a new tune, you know. Um, but there's something that happens when you do that. So if you can create that, maybe get a gig and say, okay, by this gig, I'm going to memorize these 30 tunes. You know, maybe it's two months away or whatever. Um, you know, that's a tune every two days. You know? If you can give yourself that motivation, something switches in your brain. It's 
to the point when I hear of something on the radio, I can I can describe the changes to you, you know, by saying, you know, okay, here's the one, now it goes to the flat six, you know what I mean? See, we, I can do that to, to a certain extent, and it's context dependent, because I play in like function bands and things, and I have like, right. sort of function disco pop soul tunes, I like dozens of them memorized, but when I'm doing jazz, it's like... Well, it's the same thing, it's just more sophisticated, but it's the same yeah. thing. I find out if I'm, uh, uh, you know, I'm, we, we know a few tunes, you know, it's not like... But that connection would happen if you did what I'm talking about. Right. Then you would also, you'd start hearing all music like that, not just those simple funk tunes, like, oh, now the four chord, you know what I mean? You would start to hear, oh, now now goes to the flat seven dominant, oh, and this is just like Stella, it goes up to the one, oh, and then it does a two, five, to three minor, just like Stella again, oh, and now it goes up a half step, now that's different, oh, it's like the, it's like the flat, the flat two chord that it does in Beatrice, that Sam Rivers okay, tune. Okay, so you you're cataloging mean? by the way I've seen this here and it's easy to remember because I've got a context for it. Exactly. It's right. related to most. Exactly. And do you find that because you've memorized so many standards, you don't have to think at all about the changes when you're playing because you just have an intuitive sense of the direction of the line or where it's going to go because you know what the harmony is going to be. So when you play Stella, for instance, mm. I'm sure with Stella now you don't have to think about the changes at all, obviously. Well, unless but, I'm doing my version. Which unless you're doing version. your version, yeah. Um, but if, if you were going to do just a standards gig and you were doing the, the, the normal changes, do you find you have to think ahead of what's coming up, or does it just is it just this natural process now, and it never happens? Uh, yeah, it's hard to you know at this point when people say, "What do you think when you're playing a game?" Yeah, I know it's really hard question, for me to yeah, answer. No, I don't mean it quite like that, as in yeah. what's the mental process. But do changes flag up in your mind, or do you just have to do you just do to play? But that is part of that question. Okay, you know yeah, what I mean? So, it's yeah. like I, I don't know. I mean, I practice when I practice. You could stop me and I could tell you what I'm thinking about. Or sometimes I'm literally saying, I'm going to practice thinking of this, you know what I mean? Right. But when I play, okay. especially if it's a good gig or the things are the right. The goal is to be not, I guess, isn't it? It's to, so not, to not think. I mean, yeah. It's yeah. to be, you know. Yeah. That, that comes across to me because I don't even understand what they're asking right now. I don't even know what they're talking right. about. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> We've lost the audience again. <laughs> Can we get back to Vibe? Sorry, folks. <laughs> no, this is not good for our, our listenership here. No, no, it no, is, no, man. no. This no. is great. But, but it is great. As, awesome. as an outsider uh, to that whole world, it comes across, that freedom comes across. I mean, I, I understand what playing over 251 is. I'm probably exaggerating a bit. But you, the way you play seems to go that freedom comes across and and the thing the thing that I noticed that you do that I, I find really special is where you take a shape and you and you stick with that shape and keep moving it sort of chromatically and things like that ideas where you latch on to the musical little unit theme and right, things yeah, like that yeah and so yeah so like if, so the changes are not dictating the shape of the line that you're, you're yeah in, yeah you're in control of what your line or the idea might want to be we are the yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, that being said, I mean, I think I'm always conscious of what chord I'm over. You know what I mean? And then the question is, eventually, that becomes you're not so stuck to that. You know what I mean? Well, in the beginning, you're very stuck to that, and you're. I mean, if I think back when I was working on that for the first time, I mean, it's hard for me to remember because I'm old, but. Basically, you know, it's, it's like when I think about that, I do remember the sound of like playing a minor seven arpeggio against the, the F minor, the first chord of All Things You Are, you know, and being like, oh, okay, I can hear that. That's really like, it just crunches right in there, you know, that, that sensation, I liked it, you know, I was into that and I could feel that, you know, and that was like a illuminating thing for me. Uh, that's all still there, you know what I mean? So, mm. when I, a lot of times I describe like improvising over jazz music or whatever you want to call it, with what this is, is it's like if they're in workshops before I've talked about like, like the musical ninja, you know, it's like they're sitting out here and you, you go to get a coffee and you see him and he's got his sword, you know, because it's normal, you see ninjas in the park all the time, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, so, and, Big problem in Leeds, ninjas in the park. In Leeds. Yeah, yeah. And he's, so he's, he's grasping the sword, right? And you go to get a coffee and you come back and it's like here now, right? And then you, you know, okay, you know, uh, you go upstairs, you, you shed some whole tone bullshit, you know, <laughs> and you look out your window, he's got the sword like here, you know what I mean? And then you go get lunch, you know, and then 
come back, and you see he's like barely touching this leaf here, right? And he's coming back. You get the picture. It's like three hours of this or something. And then the sun's about to go down. You look out there and you see him go. And then you look and like the leaf is completely just cut in half. You know what I mean? If you were to ask him, what the hell are you doing, you know, ninja? He would tell you, the first thing I was doing was I was concentrating on, you know, which muscles tensed up as I grasped the handle. I was concentrating on where I was grasping the handle. Then I was feeling how I could keep no, you know, resistance at all in my shoulder as it swung around, you know. Then as the sword got behind my head, I was listening to the wind flowing on either side of the leaf, trying to picture where the leaf was without looking at it, you know. Until he, he went through the whole process for you. And then I just did it. You know what I mean? And then I just did it. That's yeah. the part. That's the part that's actually playing music when you're in those zone. You know, it's, right. musicians talk about the zone. Yeah. It's not like a, it's not a lo loosely thrown around thing. It's a literal thing. It's when you get to that point where it's, you're doing it. You know, that's all of your mental cap capability is being used to do it. And that, the do it part, it, it's not one thing. It's like all those things. You know what I mean? So, so someone like me, for instance, you know, I feel I've reached a certain level of my playing. You know, I've got certain things that I can do, like with the yeah. So and you and you probably know what I'm talking about I do know what in you're your talking way, about, but, but my way may also encompass some different things that you haven't right. tackled into. This is what I was going to say. Right. So, my, I guess the question that relates to this is, when you, so so I see your achievements on the instrument. Um, and, and not a musician, but generally as a, as a jazz musician or a musician in general. Well, that's a good point, which is being, as, a, as a musician. As a musician, Which yeah. is different. It's irrelevant. You know I mean? you know, yeah, 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 yeah. It could be any instrument. But it's, it, it, it's a technical Well, they're two, thing they're as well, two but, separate things that yeah. both have to happen yeah. in, those, in that first phase we were talking about. You yeah. know what I mean? Exactly. So that when it happens, you're not thinking of one or the other. Yeah. They're both concurrently happening, you yes. know what I mean? Because our minds are amazing. I oh, mean, yeah. You know, really, they do all this shit that we don't really know about, you know what I mean? That's the thing that we, I think is, with all this information and education and technology, it's cool to remember that the mind is actually still heavier than all that shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It can do all these different things that we don't even know about. So if you try and make it, what are you thinking of when you do this? You're almost, you're, you're limiting it like, tremendously. You know what I mean? Like, it's hard to get around those things, isn't it, sometimes though? You know, when you think about, especially with something like jazz, which has a set of parameters that, you know, that, you right, see these changes, set of changes this many bars. And, yeah, this, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it can be hard to get around that very cerebral. But how do you do that? That's what I'm talking about. Is that ninja shit? You just, you just you know do what it. I mean? Yeah. No, no. But but you but you literally tackle all those invisible chains. That's what I was talking about. That's Obviously. what he was thinking about when he was thinking about. Yeah. Oh, there's a little resistance in the back of my shoulder. Yeah. But how, how now? How do I how do I deal with that? You know what I mean? That might be. Oh, every time I play over this change. I'm shaping, my lines are like following the change. Or, or every time I play a new change, I'm, I mean the simplest thing for a lot of young players, every time a new change comes, I start up my phrase on one. And then I finish before four so that I can be ready for the next one. And then I start on one again. You know what I mean? Those kind of things, you have to look for those. And then you say, okay, well now I'm gonna play, I'm gonna start every line on beat three and I'm gonna finish on the end of, on the, on the end of, uh, of, of three of the next bar, you know what I mean? Something like that, that's making you, okay, now every time a change goes up, my line's gonna go down. Mm -hmm. now, uh, now I'm gonna play a line that's three bars long, and then I'm gonna pause for two bars, and then I'm gonna play another line that's three bars long. So I'm gonna go through an entire tune with bars, with phrases of five, you know? Uh, now I'm gonna play constant triplets through an entire chorus of this tune. And every time I screw up, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna figure out a musical solution by singing a better resolution than that, you know? That kind of stuff, that's what I'm doing now all the time, you know? And then also, maybe when I discover a technical thing, aha, what's that? And then I might rectify that situation, yes. you know, and try and save it in that slow mode so yeah. that in the moment when it's happening, boom, you know? And honestly, you know, I, this is, I'm not, I'm not a pro at this. I'm trying to do that every day. And still on some gigs, I'll think. 
Okay, so that was you, you've answered the, the next question. The next question, yeah. Ask, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, I tend to talk a lot yeah, until no, I get to the next. You've got, you've got to where I was going. But in terms of, you know, seeing you at this exponential level further than I am at this point, um, do you feel a level of expectation from an audience to, to sort of, you know, impress them, as it were? I, 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 even, even on a sub, you know, subconscious level, that people, they see you play and you're known for being... This, this incredible modern jazz guitar player, and they. Well, this is the thing, you know, because you yeah. are. This, whether how, how sort of you feel about it, you uh, are seen as being that thing. And does that does that create pressure when you play? Do you feel that I think, pressure? I think most of the pressure comes from myself. Okay, that's you know, that's, yeah. that's probably out there, but it's no, it's more like, are you playing as good as you want to be playing? Which is actually maybe worse because I'm much pickier than those people are, probably. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, but you know, it's also what keeps me getting better, you know, because I know I'm always getting better. When I hear old recordings, there's some things that I'm missing. It's not like I listen to old recordings and I go, wow, I didn't seem to have lost that, you know? I, I feel like I'm always improving. And I think it comes from that whoosh, whoosh, you know what I mean? Uh, there's certain aspects that maybe I've lost that I'll hear and I'll say, well, I might want to check in with that, you know what I mean? Um, but, you know, most of it is, is a choice, you know, to just be, be hard enough on myself that I can appreciate, you know, I can appreciate my records, which is great. I'm very picky about what I put out and, and I'm really concentrated on how I mix the records and stuff, so I like my records, you know? But as far as my overall playing, I think it's getting better all the time. So I think that comes from being hard on myself, you know, which is a little bit of a burden to carry. <laughs> it's a very, very nice thing to hear because I've been very frustrated recently, and uh, it's very nice to hear that from... You know, that I love that one phrase someone said once, and that's that frustrated people make the world expand. Right. I like that. It's awesome. beautiful because, you know, it's some, something being unsatisfied with things is a horrible state, but the, what happens after is kind of beautiful. You know, which is kind of what you were alluding to anyway. So, yeah. It's the struggle. You've got to, you've got to the struggle. struggle. You know, you read, read, read about Einstein and uh, everything he went through to get his ideas across. Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, that is very inspirational. So that's a fantastic. Hope you all enjoyed that, guys. Um, we certainly have had a great time the last couple of days. And thank you very much. Thank you so much for uh, agreeing to do this, Thanks, man. Thanks, Appreciate it. It's just been a serious pleasure. Thank you. Thanks. Hope to see you, you folks, in the real yeah, world. In the real world, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, check out, uh, ch check out Jonathan's website. It's uh, jonathankreisberg.com. Yeah. Yeah. And um, if he's playing near you, check, go and see the gigs because it's, yeah. You'd be a fool not Mind to. Mind. Well, have a great uh, rest of the tour and safe uh, Thanks, guys. back to the US. Cheers. Thanks.